Hi, and welcome to the first installment of Right Start Math Level F Second Edition Overview. Remember, this is the book that we're using. And we're going to be going over four lessons per week. So were you able to read the tips and comments of, from Dr. Cotter for the table of contents? If not, try to do so soon, because I really believe that that will help you with your teaching. One item I want to highlight is number 13 on page Roman numeral three. Dr. Cotter says, the role of the teacher is to encourage thinking by asking questions, not giving answers. Once you give an answer, thinking typically stops. So remember, give your children the gift of discovery, that joy that they feel when they have discovered something. You know how it is when your light bulb goes off, you remember whatever it is that you discovered for the rest of your life. And you want your kids to do the same and to have the fun of that experience. For this week, you will need your activities for learning abacus, the math journal, which is found near the back of the student workbook. It says math journal, but it's just really graph paper, um, but with much bigger squares than what you can typically buy in the store. This helps your student to organize the numbers, keep them in order. Let's see, you'll also need your math card games book. This is the fifth edition. And the edition matters because um, new games are added with every edition. And, um, as long as you have the second edition, which is what we're using for level F, that will reference the games in the fifth edition for the math card games book. Okay. Let's see, you will also need your basic number cards. These are the green ones with fractiles on the back and green numbers on the front, okay? And the multiplication cards, which have blue ink and the short multiplication chart. And then of course, blue numbers as well. And the corners cards. This is such a fun game. You're gonna be playing this game a lot. Okay. You will also need the short multiplication chart found on appendix page one. And that can either be in the packet that you got with your book bundle or at the back of the lesson book. And last but not least, you need a dry erase board and marker. So when I look at upcoming lessons, I always look at the objectives to see if my student needs to master a concept or just be introduced to it. Um, let's look at lesson number one, okay? See how under objectives it says to learn or review the term subitizing. That means that by the end of this lesson, your student is going to understand what subitizing is, okay? But take a look at lesson two. There it says to practice mental math. If it says practice, you're not expecting mastery. Okay, so just so that you know the difference, you don't have to be slogged down in one lesson because your student didn't master it if it only said practice. Okay, to the right of the objectives is your list of materials. And of course, I just went over the materials that you'll need for the whole week, but the lesson breaks it down into what you need just for that lesson. So back to lesson one. Notice how the left column on each page is the lesson that you'll be teaching, and the right column gives you explanations, okay? These are teaching tips for you as the teacher. You don't need it to read it out loud to your student. Those are the things I read before starting math class. So as I'm preparing, I also prepare all the games that I'm gonna need for the week. I like to put them in a Ziploc baggie and label the bag with, you know, this is addition war or this is corners or whatever. Um, you don't have to be that organized or that obsessed about it. I just like to know that I have all the cards that I need and they're exactly what I need for the games that I'm going to play that week. And even as long as you just 
put the game, card games aside, the, the decks aside, so that you are prepared. It will save you a lot of time. The first thing that your student will do in this lesson, number one, is to explore the abacus. So how to use it properly, and then how to subitize numbers on it. Remember, subitizing is the quick recognition of a quantity without counting, such as, how many fingers do I have shown? Three, right? You didn't have to count that, you subitized it. It was the instant or quick recognition of the quantity. Now what I want you to do is to show seven on your fingers, okay? And then enter seven on the top row of the abacus. See how your left hand mirrors the blue beads and how your right hand mirrors the yellow beads, okay? Next, we're gonna learn about two different addition strategies, the two fives and the make 10. Remember that a strategy helps you learn a new fact or recall a forgotten one. Next comes addition war. The war games are always fun for the kids. Using games to practice math is such a beautiful technique. The students end up memorizing their facts without even realizing it. And just like you would not sit down to memorize your best friend's recipe for chocolate cake, you would just bake it a lot, right? You would use the recipe over and over again until eventually you have it memorized. Well, that's the same concept with the games. The kids are gonna be practicing their math facts so often, so frequently with these games, that they will easily and naturally memorize their math facts. Also, just like you would not buy a regular game and only play it once, please play these games frequently, okay? It, as tempting as it may be to skip them because, oh, I just don't have time, really, they're very important. So make sure that you play them even more than what the book suggests, okay? You don't have, if you don't have time every day to play with your kids, that's fine, but make sure somebody does. Okay, mom, dad, brother, sister, cousins, grandparents, neighbors, stuffed animals, it doesn't matter as long as the child is playing the games. And solitaire games work too. Those are great. You just have to make sure that the game is being played. All right, let's take a look at the math card games book again. We're going to be playing Addition War, which is game A44. A stands for addition, so you go to the addition section, and 44 is actually the number of the game. It's not the page number, okay? So I, go ahead and have it in, um, find it in your book. I already have it with a little sticky note here. That's very helpful. And then here, if I go to the bottom, you can see that it's highlighted in pink. It says addition war. Now, the reason why I highlighted it is because I'm doing that to all the games, for all the games that are either a blog or a video on the Right Start Math website. And you might wanna do the same so that it's easy when you flip through, you're like, oh yeah, there's a video instruction for that. I wanna, I wanna go watch that, okay? So go ahead and read the directions and play a bit of the games to become familiar with them um, before you dive in with your kids. So remember, if you don't know whether or not we have a video description or a blog about these games, go ahead and just enter the, the letter and the number combination into our search engine at rightstartmath.com and it'll pop up whether or not we have a game, okay? When there is a blog or a video about the upcoming games in our lessons, I will be sure to link them in the description. Don't be fooled into thinking that your older students don't need these games. They really do. It's probably even more important than the lesson itself. So back to lesson number one, second page. Notice that for this game, your student is being asked to keep track of the strategy that could be used to figure out the addition problem. If you are playing with your student, ask your child to figure out your total and the strategy that you could have used. But if two or more children are playing, each child should figure out their own strategy and their own answers. This also helps um, alleviate the problem of maybe older kids or kids who are more proficient in math answering for the ones who are less proficient. 
right? So everybody needs to solve their own problems unless you as the adult are the one playing with them. These first seven lessons in the book are called review lessons and they're meant to catch you and your student up to speed with our methods and the materials used in Right Start. It's not assumed that your student doesn't know math, for example, what six plus seven is, but rather they need to use the materials in order to understand how they work. And so we pick simple problems like six plus seven to demonstrate how um, the abacus is used in this example. All right, let's move on to lesson two. We will practice mental addition and learn a great game. Notice this time there is a warm up. From now on, there will be warm ups used to review the previous day's lesson. Okay, with the exception of the review lessons, then there is no warm up. The answers are given to you just in case the caffeine hasn't kicked in yet from that cup of coffee. And in the future, if you feel the need for your student to do a few more problems, um, like those similar warm up problems, you can always borrow them from previous lessons. However, it is meant to be a fairly quick um, exercise. So don't spend a lot of time on this section. All right, your student will be entering more than 10 on the abacus today and learning a new way to name these numbers. Please be persistent in using the math way of naming numbers. It's also called the transparent number naming system because it really does help your children understand quantity and place value, which for older kids, place value can really be a hurdle. If they don't have a good understanding of it, it really interferes with their future understanding in math. So take the time to use the math way of naming numbers now, even though it's a little awkward for us because we're not used to it, um, it it's very helpful for your student. So for example, if your student says that the answer to a problem is 31, okay, you um, should also ask for the answer the math way. So in that case, it would be 3101. All right, it's okay to use both the traditional name and the math way, but make sure that you don't skip out on using the math way of naming the numbers. All right, before learning how to play the corners game, you will be practicing mental addition. Let me give you an example. So before teaching with Right Start, if I had been asked to mentally add the number, say 57 plus 46, I would have tried to do it the paper algorithm way in my brain. So I just said, okay, seven plus six is 13, carry the one. What were those tens? They would have completely disappeared. Instead, Right Start's gonna teach your student to say, okay, 57 plus 40 is 97, plus three from the six is 100, plus another three is 103. I got the answer, I didn't lose any numbers, and it was very fast and efficient. So likewise, when you're keeping score mentally, we're not writing down the numbers in between. We're only writing down the total. So if my previous score was 85 and I just got 15 points, I would add them in my head. 85 plus 10 is 95, plus five is 100, and I would write down the 100, okay? If you would like to see more about how corners is played, that's game A9, a for addition, there is a blog and a video on our website. Don't forget the in conclusion section um, at the very end of the lesson because it sums up the learning, all right, for each lesson. Okay, moving on to lesson three. So now we'll be working on subtraction strategies. The warm up is about addition and the abacus can be used if it's necessary. Your student will naturally stop using the abacus when the facts are understood. So please do not stress about when to take it away. It's not going to become a crutch. Your student knows when it's not needed. In fact, with the older students, you may need to remind them to actually use their abacus frequently since they're not used to it. And so they may think that they don't need it, but it really helps with visualizing their math. A subtraction problem can be looked at as a subtraction problem or as an addition problem. So these strategies that we're gonna to learn today in, in um, lesson three is they're called going up, 
which focuses on the addition aspect of subtraction, part from 10 and all from 10. So spend some time with your student getting to know these strategies. You may wonder why anyone needs to know three ways to find an answer. There are several reasons for this. Your child may naturally click with one strategy over another. And if they hadn't been given a choice as to what strategies to use, they wouldn't have even known that they had a favorite. So it's nice to give them that option. Some strategies are more efficient in a given situation. So it's really good to know that you can use different strategies because depending on the situation, one is better than another. And it's always good to know that there is more than one way to solve the problem, whether it's in math or in life. Take a look on the second page at Dr. Comments, Dr. Cotter's comments about flashcards on the right of the second page. It's very useful information. You will be playing subtraction bingo this time. It is a very fun game and it can be played with several people or solo. So make sure to go to our website and search for the game S for subtraction 24 for more information. The in conclusion today asks your child to explain the three different strategies for subtracting. All right, lesson four teaches multiplication strategies. The warm up is reviewing the subtraction strategies from the previous lesson. Right Start teaches multiplication using arrays. And forming these arrays on the abacus makes it very easy to see the answer. Notice in the book how it says that six times three could be said as six taken three times. And when you're using an abacus, this wording makes perfect sense. The explanation on the right hand side points out how this is consistent with other operations. Now, several strategies for multiplication are explored in this lesson and make sure your student understands how each one works. And later on, their favorite strategy can be the one that they use all the time. But all of the strategies should be introduced and understood. Now, we're going to go explore the use of the short multiplication chart. This is a really neat tool that helps your children see the relationship between multiplication and division. Just like the abacus, the cells on the short multiplication chart are actually color coded in groups of five so that no counting is necessary. Remember, we're avoiding counting because it slows us down. You will finish up this lesson by playing Ring Around the Products. This is ga game P, P is for product, 32. This game covers all the multiplication facts. And even if your child's not solid on all of the facts, play this game and have the short multiplication chart available or the abacus available for reference. This is a very fun game and we do have a video explanation of it on our website. Okay, that's it for the first week, you're done. If you run into problems, please don't hesitate to call our customer service number. Um, they're very happy to help you with any questions that you might have. And have a great week, and we'll see you next Sunday for lessons five through eight. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.